Turn your Bibles to, Revel, to Matthew chapter 24 today. Matthew chapter 24 for a few minutes today. Um, I'd like to say that we are broadcasting from South Florida today. I'd like to say that, but we're not. It's like I'd like to preach a short sermon. I'd like to do that every time, but it never works out that way. Matthew chapter 24 today. Uh, I want to speak about uh, this particular subject today that they didn't have a clue. They didn't have a clue. Look at Matthew 24, beginning in verse 32. Matthew 24, verse 32. You might as well stand. Give a chance to stretch for just a minute. You follow along while I read. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its bread branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, know not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Father, we thank you again. Now, Lord, for the reading of thy word. And I pray, Lord, this morning that, Lord, we might get something from it. Lord, I thank you for these who have come out. Lord, I pray, Lord. Again, Lord, I claim that verse that no plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. And so, Lord, I pray today that, Lord, you'll help us as we're here. Lord, uh, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'll, Lord, encourage us this morning, Lord. In this hour, uh, Lord, at this time, uh, Lord, we need to be encouraged. Lord, all the things that are happening around us, uh, Lord, I, I pray that you will, Lord, encourage us today. Thank you, Lord, for... Uh, these that have come out, uh, Lord, on this Sunday morning. Lord, I know that many people chose to stay home. And that's okay, Lord. I didn't encourage anyone really to come today. Uh, Lord, these just showed up, and I'm glad they did. But now, Lord, we pray that you would keep us safe while we're here. For those who, who chose not to come, uh, Lord, we understand. Uh, Lord, are, are well aware of the fact of what's going on around us. And, Lord, we pray that you will bless them. Lord, bless all the folks who are watching today. Uh, Lord, a lot of folks said they were going to watch from home today. And that's okay. That's good. Uh, Lord, we pray for them. Lord, we pray. Lord, particularly for Mrs. Ward, uh, who, is, uh, got, who is sick today, Lord, with some kind of a stomach ailment. Lord, we pray for her that you would help her, Lord, this morning. Uh, Lord, we pray that you'll, Lord, we pray for Mrs. Ward. Lord, she's Lord, she thin. She's elderly. She's, she's older, Lord. And we pray that you would help her this morning. Uh, Lord, I pray for Royce today, Lord, that you would help him also, Lord, that, Lord, I pray that you would, Lord, touch him, uh, Lord, the special touch, Lord, of your hand today, Lord, upon his life. Lord, again, I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to stand up, proclaim thy word. Lord, I, I thank you, Lord, that you've given me, Lord, at least some ability, uh, Lord, to do this. We pray for America. Lord, we are in the... Uh, Strange times, to say the least. Father, I pray that you would, Lord, encourage us today. Lord, we need to be encouraged. And Lord, that as we go our way, Lord, later on, Lord, that we might leave here rejoicing, Lord, in our great salvation. Lord, there's so much to cover today, so much to say today. Lord, help us to say it in a timely manner. Uh, Lord, and, and I pray, Lord, that people who are watching, Lord, and people watch us all over America, uh, Lord, people from our own church, Lord, watching us. Uh, Lord, we who are here, Lord, that you would encourage us today, uh, Lord, in this, uh, in this time. Lord, I want to be an encouragement to people today. Don't want to be a discouragement. Uh, Lord, there's a lot of discouragement going around today. And Lord, I pray that you would, Lord, help us, Lord, uh, this morning. Uh, Lord, we pray. Help President Trump. I believe beyond any shadow of a doubt, President Trump was an accident. 
that those who would send us down the wrong road, President Trump was an anomaly, that he is a, uh, a uh, trying to think of the word, Lord, but, but he is a diversion in their plan. Uh, Lord, we know that Satan has a plan for the world. Uh, Lord, we pray for President Trump today. Lord, he is ridiculed, he is mocked, made fun of. Lord, we thank you for a man who is willing to stand up and say we need to ask God to help us. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the vice president also. Now, Lord, bless us, we pray, and help us, we ask in these few moments. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. In Matthew chapter 24, Matthew 24 is Jesus' discourse, discourse on the Mount of Olives about the last days and what's going to happen. In the last days, the disciples had asked Jesus three questions, and they said, well, when shall these things be? Because Jesus said just before that verse, he said, see all these buildings. He said, not one stone will be left on top of another. And so they asked the question, when will these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? They asked three questions in that verse. When shall the, when shall the temple be destroyed? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So then Jesus proceeds to give things in Matthew 24 and Matthew 25. It's called the Olivet Discourse about the coming of the end of the world. Now, in our reading today in verse 32, now learn a parable. There's some uh, idea about what exactly this parable means. It is a parable that has, it has a, an earthly context, but it has some kind of a deeper, deeper spiritual meaning. Um, uh, many have taken it to mean this generation shall not pass all these things come, uh, come forth. And in that they thought, well, uh, this generation, they always dated it 1948, generation being 40 years, 1988. Hence, Edgar Wisnett wrote that book, 88 Reasons Why Jesus Will Come in 1988. And of course, uh, Wisnett had it down to 1030, I believe it was September the 13th, 1030 in the morning, 1988, that Jesus was going to come. And, of course, he did not come. And so people have, I think, misapplied the parable. But this is what Jesus said in verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, Noah were so, also, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking. What's unusual about that? Nothing. It is absolutely normal for people to eat and drink. And he goes on to say they were marrying and giving in marriage. There was nothing unusual about people getting married. There's nothing unusual about people eating and drinking. Now, we're reminded from uh, Genesis chapter 6 that Noah preached for 120 years about the coming judgment of God. He preached for 120 years. There may have been some people who were saved in that 120 years. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure there probably were. I kind of look at it today, and as Noah's day, 120 years out, that there were people probably saved. I think probably Lamech was saved. I think Methuselah was probably saved. But as it got closer and closer to the time of judgment, there were fewer and fewer people until the day that Noah and his wife and three sons and three daughters-in-law all went onto the ark and were there and, and when you read in Genesis, it tells us this. They were on the ark for seven days before God shut the door. Noah didn't shut the door. God shut the door. There were seven days of grace. Noah had preached for 120 years that God was going to send judgment. Nobody believed Noah. Even after all the animals went into the ark, even after uh, Noah and his family went in the ark, God in his graciousness and goodness left the door open seven more days for anybody to enter in. But they didn't. And so then God shut the door. And on the same day that God shut the door, the fountains of the deep were broken and the canopy, which we believe was above the earth, let loose. And it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. And the Bible does tell us this, that the waters were then on the earth for about a year. Noah and his family from the day they went into the ark until they came off the ark, was a year. When they came off the ark, the waters had begun to go away. The ark had landed in the mountains of Ararat somewhere. 
and they came off of the ark. Now, notice what it says in the next verse, uh, that they knew not, and it says they were marrying and giving a marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. Everything was normal until the day that they entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. They had no clue about what was going to happen. They had no clue whatsoever. They were eating, drinking, marrying. They were partying. They were having a good time. Uh, they probably ridiculed Noah. They probably made fun of Noah and the fact that he preached and that he was talking about the coming judgment of God. But they kept right on eating. They kept right on drinking. They kept right on marrying. They kept right on every day things that people normally, that's what they kept on doing. They had no clue about what was to happen. Look back at Revelation. Let me give you three things this morning, if I might. Look at Revelation. We, Revelation chapter 6 and all the way up through chapter 19. We're going to look at chapter 13. Revelation chapter 6 or, and up through chapter 19. We're going to look at chapter 13 in just a moment. But in Revelation chapter 6 all the way up to chapter 19, it kind of gives us a, a description about what is going to happen here. We look at the situation today, and uh, I, you'll forgive me, uh, I, I think to, in many ways, uh, the, the hysteria that is going around today is, is media-driven. Uh, when we had the, it was either the swine flu or the bird flu, 68,000 people died in that flu season. 68,000 people died. Uh, there wasn't mass panic. Uh, there wasn't buying a toilet paper, uh, you know, so that the shelves were bare. Everybody kind of went on about their, their business. I, I believe now today there have been approximately, and I am not diminishing in any way, the fact that 200 people have died. Uh, that is sad. It, it, it really, that, that 200 folks have died because of this, it really is a sad thing that, that people have died. But in when the, when the swine flu, bird flu was around, hundreds of thousands of people uh, got it. 68,000 of our fellow Americans died, and there was not this mass hysteria that we see today. And there are some things about this particular flu that's going around right now. It, it, it's probably, uh, I, I read somewhere a statistic about how easy it was to catch this year's type A and type B flu. A carol was around uh, someone at her school that got type B flu, and then uh, she was around that person, and then the person came back and got sick and got type A flu, and Carol didn't get it. Just because you're around somebody with the flu doesn't mean you're going to get it. Just because you're around someone with this uh, corona flu doesn't mean that you're going to get it. Uh, Johns Hopkins came out, uh, and I heard a doctor say today that your chances of getting it from a person are between 1% and 5%, something like that. I'm not sure the mass hysteria, and you know what's going on. I mean, people are going around, and uh, I went to Walmart the other day, and sure enough, there was no toilet paper there, and, and I don't know why, but, but the Ajax dishwashing detergent, uh, that was all gone, and now people are buying uh, plastic garbage bags. And again, like somebody said, well, what are they going to do with that? Put them over their head to keep from getting it, and it's like, uh, it, it's this, it, and as our brother said, he was in, in uh, Lowville, people say Lowville. Yeah, you don't say a co, you say a cow. And so we say Lowville. And so, you know, people, uh, that Lowville is like, Lowville is like deserted. There's nobody there. People are, are um, fearful. The Bible says in the last days, men's hearts will fail them because of fear. And we see this kind of a, a, a mass hysteria. They and, and I'm not saying that closing the schools was a bad idea, particularly when you still get paid. You know, I'm not saying that, that you know, saying, well, we ought to stay home and, or stay six feet away from each other just in case, you know, somebody might have it. I mean, that, I'm not saying those aren't a good idea. But I'm saying that this mass hysteria that we see going on around us, I'm not sure is warranted. But I'm saying that what is about to occur in the world, people have no clue 
about what's going to happen during the tribulation. We think that this corona flu is bad. We think that it is bad. And, and again, I'm not, I'm not downplaying it. I'm not saying that, you know, we shouldn't be wary of it. We ought to be wary of the common cold. We ought to be wary of type A and type B flu. But people have no idea about the coming tribulation that's going to occur here in this world. People have no idea. And, and the, the, the facts uh, that we see today really don't warrant necessarily what is happening. But there is coming, look at Revelation chapter 13. There is coming a guy, there, there's a, this man of sin, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, this man of sin, that wicked one, the son of perdition, um, the false, the beast that arises out of the bottomless pit, this guy is going to arise on the scene. Look, we are living in, in strange times in which... Um, we're, we are, in, in, in my humble opinion, for whatever that may be worth, we are seeing that, that people are, are, are listening to the media. And, I, I've, you know, I watch them. If you watch some of the news channels, if you watch some of them, they, they, they get a lot of false reporting, a lot of uh, inaccurate reporting, and you read things on the Internet. And, again, you can believe anything on the Internet, but... But it's like they give these things, but they have, they've gotten America to, again, the, the bird flu, swine flu is a whole lot worse than this flu. And we didn't see the panic that we see today. You say, well, why is that? Well, I think the media has done a really, 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 really good job of, of scaring us. Uh, into believing that every person that comes near somebody with a coronavirus is going to get it, they're going to die. Brethren, I'm telling you, it's nothing like what's going to be compared when the tribulation shows up, when the Antichrist shows up. Look at Revelation chapter 13. I've mentioned it several times, but look there if you would. It says in verse, oh, we verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them with, um, um, I lost place, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to given them to over all kindreds and tongues and power was given over him. Power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All the world uh, wondered, in verse 3, the last sentence, and all the world wondered after the beast. Now look out the end of the chapter. It says in verse 16, And it causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell. People are during the tribulation are not going to be able to buy or sell except they have this mark, and we'll read this in a minute, the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. People aren't going to buy or sell. People say, well, I went to the store and they didn't have any garbage bag preacher. I went to the store and they didn't have any hand sanitizer preacher. I went to the store and they didn't have any toilet paper preacher. I went to the store and there was no water. No water? What's wrong with your water? The virus in the water. Why are people buying cases of water? But they say there is no water. And um, in the shelves in some parts, of the, now the, the fresh produce stuff makes you healthy. That's a lot of that that's still there. But anyway, but it says nobody's ever going to be able to buy or sell. Nobody will be able to, except they have that number. And it says in verse 18, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six 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 six. Now you know we say this. We say this. Well, what exactly does that mean, preacher? What does it mean that that six six six? That what is that number? What does it mean to have the mark in your forehead or in your right hand? Nobody really knows. Uh, people have surmised that unless you have the number six 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 in your hand or on your forehead, 
that you won't be able to buy. I, I, I don't know that. I mean, we're looking at a, a society now where they want to embed chips in the back of your hand. Uh, so, and when you go to the store, you just run your hand under the scanner. Uh, that, that may be it. I do not know. Uh, I can't believe that people will want to walk around. Of course, we live in an age of tattoos where everybody and his brother, you know, got, gets a tattoo. Some people are so inked up. And, uh, but that, that people will not be able to buy or sell except they have. And people have no idea. They think it's bad now. I mean, they go to the store and say, well, I can't find anything. Look back in Revelation chapter 6. Chapter 6 through chapter 19. Chapter 6 through chapter 19. Give a description, at least to some degree. And again, the people say, well, you know, it probably won't be too bad. Look, as it was in the days of Noah, they had, they, they, and had, they had no clue until the day came, until the flood came. They just went around life as normal. Revelation chapter 6, chapter 6, the first seven seals. The first four, of course, are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. There's the white one, then there's the red one, then there is the black one, and then fourthly, beginning in verse 7. Now, here, here's, here's what we see. We say, well, preacher, it's kind of, of, of a... Uh, uh, dysfunctional time. Absolutely it is. It is dysfunctional. Dysfunctional time. Uh, all the things that we see that are happening. Now, you'll notice in verse 1 and 2, it talks about the white horse. Somebody went out to conquer. Traditionally, or usually this is considered to be the Antichrist, he goes out with a bow, no crown, no, no arrows, just a bow. So whatever his conquest is seems to be somewhat um, of a uh, peaceful nature. But in verse 3 it says, and, and verse 4, And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given him to take, that set thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So now, uh, because of this conquest, now it does appear that war breaks out. A universal type war. Verse 5 and verse 6 is the third seal. And when he had opened the third, I, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny. Uh, the government wants to give everybody $1,000. Wants to give me 1000 and everybody, Hey, that's a great thing. Everybody's going to give $1,000. But I, I've said this before. If you have $1 and it's worth one dollar, and you print four more dollars, or you print three more dollars, now your dollar only becomes worth a quarter. So they want to give everybody a thousand dollars, and if you got kids, they want to give you more for that. Everybody says, oh, hot dogs, everybody's out of work, and I realize that people are out of work, uh, but people say, well, you know, we're going to get all this from the government. But there's coming a day, in verse 5 and 6, it says, three measure of barley for a penny. A penny was a day's wages, and so... It's going to take a day's wage to buy, in our way of thinking, it'll take a day's wage to buy a loaf of bread. We think inf our inflation rate is pretty low right now, but back in, in the days that are coming, and I say this, people have no clue about what's coming down the road. They have no idea about what's going to overtake. When I, when I, I think this to myself, <coughs> that, you know, maybe... Uh, Maybe we ought to be looking for Christ to come. That in this day and age when we see all these things happening, because look, there, there are things that are happening in this world. We could look at, at chapter 8, or, but we're going to run out of Genesis, and I believe it's verse 22. The Bible says this, that as long as the earth remains, there'll be seed time and harvest. There'll be planting and harvest. There'll be uh, uh, cold and uh, heat. As long as the earth remains, uh, there's going to be planting and harvest. There's going to be springtime. There's going to be harvest. There's going to be summer. There's going to be, as long as the earth remains. But there is a, a uh, you, you may probably didn't see this. Somebody at a Bernie Sanders thing stood up and said, uh, listen, uh, 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 I, I don't know if you would like to do this. You can think about it. But he said, we have got to reduce the population of the earth to reduce the, the climate of the earth. If you think that you're so important that you're going to reduce the the temperature of the earth by one degree, you think you're pretty important. But we have this climate change thing going on around now, 
and they, they want to control us through that. Well, we, don't, we, we need to cut down the, the population of the earth. We need to, it's like this abortion thing. They're trying to make it seem normal. I saw this today that in Florida, you have to give it a reason why you have this abortion. And I believe it was 2018, two years ago, there were 70-some thousand abortions in Florida, and the reason for over 70% was no reason. They just make it seem normal. Well, it's all right. You know, it, and, and they'll say, well, it's in the be best health of the mother and the be best health of the baby. I never knew where it was in the be best health of somebody to kill them. But, you know, we're, we're living in this time where they're trying to control the message, trying to control, um, um, uh, uh, last I knew, uh, if you're going to have a baby, it takes a man and a woman, and that's the last I knew about it. And so they're trying to make marriage something more than just husband and wife. They're trying to make it man and man or woman and woman. to try to cut down. Well, we've got to cut down the population of the earth. And so we are living in what I would consider to be strange times. Lastly, notice this in chapter 6 of Revelation, and verse 7, verse 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him, was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill. So we live in this time where, you know, and, and nobody, nobody wants to die, and we don't want any of our family to die, and we don't want any of our friends to die, and so, you know, we're taking all these precautions so that people won't die. And so we are uh, hopeful, I think, I think in America, I believe the count is now like 200 people have died in America from this corona flu. About 200 people have died. And again, as John Dunn said, the death of any man diminishes me. And we, we look at those people and we are sorry for them. I heard about this family in New Jersey. They had a big dinner uh, and there were like 11 of them and they were together for several hours. And four of them have died from the, that corona flu and some others are very sick and that family from it because they were together uh, for so much time. But there is a day coming when a fourth part, if we are at 8 billion people, 2 billion people are going to be killed by the pale rider, the one that is on that horse that goes out. And it says this, and a fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger, people aren't going to have any food. You say, well, preacher, we live in really a uh, 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 bad time. I'm telling you that people who are going through the tribulation don't have a clue about what's just around the corner. We look for Jesus to come. And we, we look at all these things that are trying to control the population, trying to control this, trying to control that. And the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it talks about the man of sin that is going to be revealed uh, but only after we are taken out of the way. We live in times where people don't have a clue about the great tribulation. In this verse, it says a fourth part of people were killed. That's two billion people. That leaves six billion people. A little bit later in the book of Revelation, it says that a third of the population of the earth, that's another two billion people that are going to be killed during the Great Tribulation. People don't have a clue. Brethren, we live in a, in a day, well, all right, we're a little inconvenienced. Look at, look at Isaiah chapter 20 for just a moment. Isaiah chapter 26 for just a moment. Look at Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah 26 there in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 26. Note this verse. 26 and verse 20. Here's what Isaiah the prophet says. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. Look, we say, well, we're inconvenienced now. We can't go to work. We can't go to school. I'm just, I'm saying, I said this to my wife today. I don't know how people in welfare don't do anything, survive. I'm going nuts. I, I go outside and walk around. I come over to the church and read, and I'm over to the house, and 
Now, I don't think it's illegal to go out and go for a drive, but, you know, well, then you got to go to the gas station and grab a hold of the handle, and there might be a, you know, so, you know, we're, we're, it's like we're stuck. But Isaiah said, well, till the indignation, till the pestilence is passed, we're going to get by this. We will get by this. I, I, I perceive sooner or later, you know, in, in China, they don't, they have very few new cases of it, and, and most people have recovered from it. So that'll happen here in America. I'm saying now, though, that people in the Great Tribulation, people don't have a clue. You hear people talk about Jesus coming. Ah, Noah preached. Oh, God's going to say, ah, that Noah, he doesn't know what he's talking about. It has never rained on the earth. Why would it rain? They knew not. They had no clue. Brother, once it started raining, then they had a clue. But up until that point, they had no clue what was about to happen. And people during the Great Tribulation have no clue. Look at Mark chapter 8. Secondly, this. Mark chapter 8. Look at Mark chapter 8. People have no clue. Not Mark 8, Mark 9. People have no clue about the Great Tribulation, about what's going to happen during that time. They just, it's like we're going down the road. Merrily down the road. Well, wow, what's going to happen? That can't be that bad, preacher. They have no clue about the tribulation. Secondly, this. People have no clue about hell. Verse 42. Whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. And if thy hand offend thee, it is cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell. Notice, into the fire that shall never be quenched. Where they're worm. Worm is just an old English word for conscience. That's all that means. Abraham said to the rich man in hell, he said, Son, remember. Luke chapter 16. Son, remember. So evidently, people that are in, in hell, remember this. The guy said, the, the rich man who died said to Abraham, he said, I've got five brothers. He evidently remembered his five brothers. Abraham said, son, remember that in, in your lifetime, you got good things. And Lazarus got nothing. Now Lazarus is comforted. He said, but in Luke 16, he said, I am tormented in this flame. Jesus said in this verse, he said, where the worm dieth not, where people remember, and the fire is not quenched. It says it again two other times in that verse. People have no idea <coughs> about the coming great tribulation and everything that's going to happen, and they have no idea about, and then people have no clue about hell. Now I hear people say, you know, I've heard people say, and I, people say this to me, well, if I go to hell, I'll have, uh, my friends and I are going to party in hell. Well, if I go to hell, we'll, we'll play cards in hell. If I go to hell, eh, it won't be so bad. They have no clue. I mean, it's like, well, it can't, wait a minute, but Jesus said here, the fire is not quenched. It, now, again, we don't have an idea. We can only go by what Jesus says. That We really don't have any idea, but people who say we have some idea that we read this, but most people say, well, you know, it, it can't really be that bad. But it is that bad. Look at Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. Here... John writes this in Revelation 21 and verse 8. It says, But the fearful, and again, we've gone over this, and, and we won't take a whole lot of time to go over this. The fearful are simply those who are afraid to get saved because they're afraid what somebody else might say, say. Well, if I got saved, what would my father think? If I got saved, what would my mother think? Or my brother? Or my friends? The fearful the unbelieving, 
those are people. The fearful are those who, who believe the, the truth. And I've talked with people say, do you understand what I'm, I say, do you understand? What, yeah, I understand what you're saying. You know, you need to be saved. Yeah, I know I need to be saved. Would you like, no, I don't want to get saved. Well, why not? Well, I don't know. Do you understand what, I understand Jesus died. I understand it, but I don't want to get saved. The unbelieving are those who simply don't believe it. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in heaven. I don't believe in hell. I don't believe in an afterlife. I believe that when you die, this is it. They throw you in the ground. You become food for the worms. Uh, and, and that's it. I, that's the unbelieving. Then it says also um, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Now, whatever that may mean, all murderers, liars, fearful, unbelieving shall have their part. I've said before, I think that there are probably degrees of punishment. Uh, the Bible says this, of how much worse punishment shall they be thought worthy of trodden underfoot the Son of God and count the blood of the covenant wherewith they are sanctified and a holy thing that people who have heard the gospel story and rejected it, uh, they, that he, the punishment for them will be worse than those who have never had an opportunity. Or, and I shouldn't say that, had an opportunity, because God warns people every day. But notice what it says. In the lake which burneth. doesn't say which burned. It burneth with fire and brimstone. See, what's brimstone, preacher? That's, what, that's sulfur. If you ever had the smell of really bad rotten eggs, that's what brimstone smells like. Uh, it's sulfur, and which is the second death. The Bible says this, that the smoke of their torment ascendeth forever and ever. People have no clue. They, they think, a lot of people, well, that's just a fairy tale to scare people into heaven. Well, it, it, that's not really real, preacher. I, I'm amazed by the number of people who say, well, I don't believe that hell is real. I don't think there is a fire. I've even met Christians who say, I don't believe there's, there's fire in hell. Their opinion that hell is merely separation from God. Now, that isn't what Jesus said. And so people who are on their way to that God-awful place have no idea about the lake of fire, they, about, about hell. They think, well... You know, as I said, people say, well, you know, I I'll be there with all my friends. You won't see your friends. Because the Bible makes it abundantly clear that it is a place of outer darkness. It is so dark, you can say, well, I thought there was a fire there. Well, there's some kind of fire there, but it doesn't light the place up because it's a place of outer darkness where people have the constant sensation of falling farther and farther away from the only light that could help them. People say, well, it won't be that bad. Wait a minute. They have no clue. They're just like the people in Noah's day. Ah, it isn't going to rain. It's not going to rain. Rain? What's rain? Because evidently in Noah's day it did not rain. There was a mist that went up from the earth, and there was a, a mist that evidently, a great big canopy that the earth was, it was like living in Florida every day, amen? But uh, so as like, that's how the earth was. And when Noah said it's going, God's going to judge the world and that it is going to rain, people, what? You've got to be kidding me. It didn't, uh, what is rain? And number one, has never rained. Listen, I believe that Noah probably built the ark where there wasn't a lake. Why would you build an ark in your backyard? I think right here, we are in like a hundred year floodplain, which means that probably won't ever flood here. Uh, that's the kind of floodplain we live on. Uh, do you realize how much rain there would have to be for the Black River to get up this high and, and to stay this high? I mean, a couple times we can remember the Burdick's Crossing, uh, the road flooding over over there so that you couldn't pass the road. But it never stayed that way very long because it takes a tremendous amount of water sustained to keep going over the road. But you think about Noah's Ark was about from here to the stop sign. That's about how big it was. It was about, it was about 50 yards across and about 75 cubits high. It was, 
it was big, there's no doubt about that. But he didn't build it on the lake. He, and people probably laughed and made fun of him. You know, people think, well, why would anybody go to church today when, you, you know, you could get sick? You could. And we're not here. My dear friend said, some people are having church today just to prove they ha don't have to obey the government. That's not why we're having church today. Man, we came here to, to, to worship God, to sing. I hope you sang when we sang. and Hear from the Word of God. Listen, there's a day coming when people are going to find out about hell. They don't have a clue now. They think, well, it's a fairy tale. It's a myth to scare little kids. It's a, it's a grown-up boogeyman. But they have no clue. They have no clue whatsoever. As it was in the days of Noah, they knew not. They didn't have a clue. Ah, it's not going to rain. Ah, God wouldn't do that. People say, God is too good to send anybody to hell. God doesn't send anybody to hell. People go there of their own choice. Because God in his mercy is warning people every day about, about that there is a God, that there is a heaven. And people just refuse to believe it. I'm not going to believe that. Just like Noah. I'm not going to believe it's going to rain. Just because you don't believe it doesn't mean it's not so, dear friend. They didn't have a clue in Noah's day. They don't have a clue about the coming tribulation and about how horrible and horrific and half the world's population is going to be killed by hunger and by animals and by disease. They don't have a clue. They don't have a clue about hell. They just, pff, ah, that's bunk. Nobody really believes that anymore. Let me give you one more. We'll go over Revelation in chapter 22. Chapter 22. We don't really have a clue. Let me give you something encouraging. We really don't have a clue about heaven. We don't have a clue about heaven. The Bible gives us, just like about hell, the Bible gives us some glimpses about hell that the rich man was in torments. It, 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 it expressly says torments, that he was in a physical torment. He was in emotional because he said, I got five brothers who are coming here. He remembered, and he said, I've got not only five brothers, but he was in a, a spiritual torment because he was separated from God. But that really doesn't, we really can't get the full idea about it. We really don't have a clue about heaven. Now the Bible gives us some glimpses of it. Revelation 21, 22, I'm sorry, and verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. What verse 15 may exactly mean? For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, or whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him that heareth Say, come, let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely, that they may enter in to the gates. The Bible gives us some glimpses of heaven. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. So one thing we know about heaven is that there are mansions there. People say, well, what do we need a mansion? I don't know. I just know there are mansions there. I, but Pete and I sang a lot of times, or sometimes, just build me a cabin in the corner of glory land um, somewhere by the street of life, gate of life, whatever, that it may ever stand. We've also sang this, I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. I'm not sure. Nobody can really tell you, what do we need a mansion for? Are we going to sleep there? Are we going to entertain there? Or do we need a kitchen there? Uh, do we need a bedroom there? Uh, do we need bathrooms there? What do we need a man? I don't know. 
The Bible just says that in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, okay, so we got a mansion. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, the city itself is pure gold. Now, the only thing that ever compared to that was Solomon's temple that was overlaid in pure gold. The entire, the whole thing was overlaid in pure gold. Wow. The Bible says the streets are gold. The Bible says that every gate, there are three gates. The city is about 1,500 miles four square, meaning that way and that way and that way. And that the wall itself around the city, as we look at it, is about 200 feet high. You, if, if, if you were standing next to the gate, you could not see the top of the city. I forget, I remember, I forget how many miles away you have got to be from the, the, the New Jerusalem, heaven, before you could actually see the top of the city. The gate, the wall that surrounds the city is 200 feet high. There are three gates, because the city is 1,500 miles. There are three gates on every side. Each gate is made of, of pearl. Say, are there pearly gates? Absolutely, there are. The three gates <coughs> are made of pearls. Then every then all three of those gates are encompassed in a great big pearl. Each gate is made of a pearl, and then all three of the gates are made of a great big pearl. The streets are of pure gold. There are mansions. The city is pure gold. There's a, there are 12 foundations to the city of precious stone. There is no sun in the city, for God himself is the light. So all I can, in my mind, is picture... The light of God reflecting off these 12 precious stones to be beautiful. The Bible says around the throne is an emerald rainbow because the most pleasing color to the human eye is green. It's like our uh, window here. Uh, how beautiful green is. And you know what the Bible says about this? Paul said this and 2 Corinthians 12, he said, I knew a man, whether 15 years ago, I don't know, who was caught up to the paradise of God. Now, the word paradise means beautiful gardens. That's what it means. I don't know, we only get glimpses about what heaven is. Paul said he heard things that he could not even write down. I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered the heart. But God has prepared for them that love him. Look back really quickly at Ephesians. Let me give you one other verse. Chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, last verse. Ephesians chapter 2. We, we have no clue about heaven. Did you ever have a wow experience like, Wow. That was more than what I thought it was going to be. Wow. It's like the day I got married. You know, it's like uh, my, my brother was there. Uh, I don't even remember. I think Dick Wilson was there. He was there. And who was the other guy? Greg, Greg Smith. That's right, Greg Smith. Shipley. Yeah, yeah, yes. See, I don't even remember. I mean, you know, it's like, and... Uh, I remember the preacher's name was John Smith. That's who the preacher was. And the bridesmaids were Ruth and Connie and Debbie and your sister. Right, her sister. How quickly we forget. And, uh, and, I, remember in a, and I remember on this side was my family. I remember seeing my, my, my cousins were there. My first cousins were there. Uh, they came and uh, Carol's family and friends, all two of them were over, no, they were over on this side, and they were there, and, and I remember, I, I, I don't remember a whole lot, I really, I, I remember I was nervous, you know, that kind of thing, and I remember her father, uh, he, he was a little, a little bit heavier, uh, 
than he is now. And I, all I could think of, he reminded me of the Campbell Soup Boy uh, uh, when he was coming down the aisle. He had a bow tie on, and um, I remember seeing him. And then I uh, remember seeing my wife. I thought, wow. Wow. Did you ever have an ex Wow, that, that was more than what I thought. That is what heaven will be. We have no clue. Look at Ephesians 2 and verse 6. And hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Verse 7. We have no clue what verse 7 means. That in the ages to come he might show forth the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. I have no idea what that verse means. But that in the ages to come, while eternity rolls, God is going to show forth his exceeding riches of his grace to us. Whatever that verse may mean, we have no idea what it means. But it's going to be a wow when we get to heaven and see all of our family and see our friends. And see, uh, I, I, was, I was thinking about this the other day, that uh, uh, people that I, that I know are there people that we are looking forward to seeing, and, and that'll be a great day. That'll be a glad day, glad day of reunion, glad day of when we, when we all get to heaven, we're going to sing and we're going to shout, and uh, we're going to walk on streets of gold, whatever that may mean. And the city itself is pure gold, and it's um, just beyond our imagination, and around the throne is this green emerald throne, and the, the river of life is flowing, and there will be trees there and be paradise there. Our initial response and our eternal response will be constantly, wow, isn't this great? We, we do live in trouble sometimes. We do live in times where, where you know, we, we're, many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow and I know he holds my hand. I don't know everything there is to know about tomorrow, but I do know this, that I know God and I know that God knows everything that there is to know. And we live in this life, and we say, boy, I love living here, preacher. I love it in the summertime here, and I do love summertime. The grass is green, and the trees are green, and the bugs are out. Bless God, when we get to heaven, there won't be any no see and there won't be any deer flies uh, the, the bug us when we're out in the woods. It'll be the paradise of God, and that in the ages to come, God is going to show forth the exceeding riches of his grace to us. We have no clue. We think we know about heaven, but we have no clue about how great heaven is going to be and to think we're going there. We often talk about the return of Christ and maybe one day, Je I'm not, sorry, and one day Jesus will return. Maybe today. They knew not until the flood took them all away. They had no clue. Father, we thank you again. Lord, for this day, and Lord, for the circumstances that we find ourselves in and everything, give thanks. And so, Lord, we do give you thanks, Lord, for everything that in our lives. Lord, I pray again that, Lord, you'll keep us, Lord, keep us safe. Lord, you know what's best. Lord, here we, we find ourselves, and Lord, the, the situation is kind of, it's difficult, Lord, but people have no clue what's going to happen to them during the Great Tribulation. They, they think things are bad, and they're really not bad now. And we're a little inconvenienced, to be sure. Uh, but they have no clue. People have no clue about hell. And truthfully, Lord, people have no clue. We, who are the redeemed, we look forward to heaven. We think about heaven. But, Lord, we don't have any clue. We get a glimpse here or there, but Lord, we don't have a clue. We just know that it is going to be a wonderful place where we shall dwell eternally and that through eternity, Lord, you're going to show forth your exceeding riches, Lord, to us, whatever that may mean. I have no idea what it means. Nobody can tell you what that means, but Lord, we certainly believe it. So, Father, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to meet. 
Lord, we thank you for, uh, again, Lord, this, this good day. Lord, I pray that you'll help us. Again, we pray for America. We pray for our president. We pray for all those who are in charge, Lord, who are trying to make decisions for us on a daily basis. Lord, we pray again that you'll bless us and help us. Lord, thank you again for allowing us to be here. And Lord, keep us safe the rest of this day, we pray. And Lord, we'll thank and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.